What's good everyone, it's your boy, your dig, 4 eyes, 2 J's here, and today we're here to talk about OJ Mako, who recently popped up and did an interview with No Jumper, discussing an abundance of things that have been going on in his life. Particularly interesting to me was the discussion about his fall off, because there's really no question that Mako is a classic case of being a one hit wonder. You guessed it would open up this huge opportunity for him to establish himself as one of the leaders of the newer generation, but as we've seen play out before, an artist's inability to tame themselves for the music industry leads to them being slowly pushed out the industry until they're left with basically no career in the mainstream sense. Gotta finesse, gotta finesse, gotta finesse. I got a ball, I got a stunt, I gotta get it. I'm in the city, I'm off a tap, running up digits. Gotta finesse, gotta finesse, gotta finesse. Gotta finesse, gotta finesse, gotta finesse. Feeling like Majin Buu. On pink juice. We saw this happen with Chief Keef, who got blackballed out of the industry heavily, but luckily in Keef's case, by the time that came around, he'd already established a buzz over several years and established a big enough core fan base that he didn't even need the industry, and even years after he got pushed out of the industry and wasn't getting radio play or the big push, he could still shift the culture with songs like Finito or Earned It. However, unfortunately, this wasn't the case with Mako. Let's firstly begin with breaking down how he dug himself into a hole, and from there delve a bit deeper into why he couldn't bounce back. Back. And it's pretty simple really, Mako was very loose with the tongue to say the least, and didn't shy away from speaking his mind. This can be good for an artist to a certain limited extent, but when you're a fresh artist on literally your first hit and you start saying names and speaking your truth about these artists, the media will quickly steer the narrative in whatever direction they want, and whether you even had anything negative to say, or even dissing them or not, they'll make it look that way if they want to. And whether Mako outright dissed all these artists I'm about to mention, or simply had his opinion on them, it's irrelevant as I said said because the media ran with a narrative against him and framed them negatively. And this list of artists includes Travis Scott, Future, Drake, Logic, Key, Migos, Beyonce, and on top of this he got ridiculed by the feminist movement for his Twitter actions. I just said all of that very quickly and don't have the time to go into every single comment or action from him in detail, but let's just reiterate a couple of those names. Drake, Future, Travis Scott, Beyonce. Sheesh, those aren't the type of people you can speak freely on when you're in the industry and expect no ramifications. So not only did this pit the media against him, but this also put the fans of all those artists against him, forcing them to choose sides, and again, reiterating, he was literally brand new to the mainstream, so why would fans pick him over a Drake for example, and he just kind of looked like an attention seeking person who will do anything to get that attention. And before we go on guys, a quick shout out to IC Rap from my Instagram, really good rap page for information and news and all that, make sure to check them out if you haven't. Also, make sure to follow your boy on Instagram, at your dig, you know the vibes, go drop me a follow. Also, a reminder about my Cardi and Travis merch tees, link in the description, and if you haven't, like, subscribe, comment, turn on notifications, but let's keep going with Mako. Okay, so I think it's pretty clear the harm his free speaking nature did for him, but then we get to the other side of this, and this is a labor perspective of quality control. Now, not only did he beef with Amigos, who were also signed to QC, but it's important to consider QC's perspective on this and how they would be viewing this, because remember, anything that that an artist of yours says, any headline, any media press, ultimately comes back to you, your brand, and now you have to deal with those strained relationships, those consequences, and how they affect your public relations. So imagine seeing your new artist getting all these negative headlines against all those artists I just mentioned, and thinking, damn, okay, now we're in the bad books with Drake, Beyonce, Future, etc., all those labels, all those managers, all those media outlets, and what is the decision you would make? Well, it's pretty simple, cut him off at the knees. At this point, he's a huge liability for your investment, and if it keeps going, he could do a lot of long-term damage for your brand. This then leads us to the next stage of Mako's blackballing, which is where essentially QC did exactly that. They stopped him from releasing music, and according to him, they were actually taking down the music he had put up on streaming services, and basically stopped communicating to him altogether. All in all, they isolated him from the label as if he had nothing to do with them in the first place, but instead, he was still contractually signed with QC, so this means he wasn't able to release music or do anything, so more or less, they stopped his ability to function as a recording artist. And if as an artist you lose the ability to release music for years on end, you're basically forced into irrelevance, forced out of any way to stay relevant or to grow your fan base, etc, etc, which is part of the reason as to why we've seen Mako fade off into irrelevance like we've seen. And at the end of the day, I'm not defending QC by saying this, I do think it's pretty fucked up what they did, because that is a human, that is a career, that is someone's livelihood and way of feeding their family you're playing with, and in my opinion, it's way more of an admirable decision to just cut him off from the label and let him do his own thing and not keep him tied up there. 
but at the same time, I can understand why they decided to do what they did. And that pretty much sums up exactly what happened to Mako there. It begins with him being too loose with his tongue, tarnishing countless relationships, making him a hated figure in the eyes of the public and the media, forcing people to choose sides against him, which then consequently forced QC to take appropriate action to protect the integrity, protect the image, and ultimately protect the existence, the status, and the longevity of their label, which in the simplest terms means stopping Mako from being able to function as an artist. And I think this is one of the most extreme and outright blatant cases of blackballing we've seen in recent years. However, hopefully moving forward, Mako is able to either rekindle his relationship with QC or get himself into a better label situation. But that's been your boy. Thanks a lot for watching. If you made it this far, like, subscribe, comment, turn on notifications, all the usual. And there are more videos of mine on screen right now. Do make sure to check them out if you haven't.